Welcome to Golf Training Hacks and part four in our series on spinal disc injuries in the golf swing. So how do we address the cascade of injuries that can be caused by disc issues from the golf swing? Well, if you have significant chronic pain, your best option is to find a good clinician that can provide you with an assessment that can determine the root causes of your pain and the movements that trigger the pain. Because you need to temporarily remove the trigger movements that are causing the pain so you can break the pain cycle and calm that injury down. Now I say temporarily remove these trigger movements because if you're a golfer and one of the trigger movements is the golf swing, well, you need to find a solution that can get you back to pain-free golf. So once you temporarily remove the pain triggers, then you can build a rehab program that can provide pain-free movement, pain-free techniques that will eventually lead to building back a pain-free golf swing. And that might include changing your swing technique to accommodate some of the issues that you have. But you know, it's not just the golf swing that can trigger uh, disc injuries and pain. It can be things in everyday life. For example, if your job requires that you sit a lot and you sit with poor posture and you've been sitting that way for a very long time, like years, well, it's likely you might have some disc issues and the trigger movement is sitting. Or maybe sleeping on a mattress that's not right for you could trigger pain. Or it could be raking leaves or even just reaching up to a high shelf to grab something could trigger pain. The key point here is that there's no such thing as nonspecific back pain. There's always a root cause and there are trigger movements that cause the pain. And if you keep triggering the pain, it's really tough to deal with the issues. If you don't have that chronic debilitating back pain, you just have a twinge, maybe you feel something starting or you just don't want to get into that pain cycle, what do you do? Well, the first step is to be able to maintain good posture every day without thinking about it. And by good posture, I mean maintaining a neutral spine. Because a neutral spine buffers force best, and that'll give you the best likelihood of not damaging discs during everyday submaximal loading. The, the stuff that happens to us every day that can eventually lead to disc damage. Now, a neutral spine is so important, especially if you have an open fissure bulge. Now, here's why. When you have a neutral spine posture, that means that vertebrae are stacked with even pressure. They're putting even pressure on the discs. When you're out of neutral, you have too much extension or too much flexion. Okay, so when you have even pressure on the discs, if you have an open fissure, it's more likely that that fissure will stay closed and the even pressure bulges that disc out evenly and you're not gonna be uh, pressurizing that gel out through the crack because it's closed. When you have uh, a, a spine that's out of neutral, that means it has too much extension or flexion. That means that the vertebrae are rotated too far forward or too far to the rear. That means it's putting pressure unevenly on parts of the disc. So let's say the pressure is being placed this way on this side of the disc. The, the center gel is being pressurized unevenly, but if you have an open fissure, the crack on this side is opened up and that gel will squirt through and then you have the bulge and the pain and the inflammation. So if you have an open fissure that exists already, it's really important that you keep that neutral spine all day long, especially when you're putting load on the spine. So maintaining a neutral spine all day is the first step to avoiding those disc injuries. And let's face it, if you can't keep good posture every day, if you can't keep that neutral spine every day without thinking about it, well, good luck doing it during the high speed, high force rotation we call the golf swing. Maintaining good everyday posture doesn't mean you're making a conscious effort to keep that neutral spine position. Good everyday posture should be a reflexive response to everyday movement and gravity, not a conscious muscular effort to be putting yourself into a neutral spine position. Now to do that, you need certain physical capacities. You need adequate hip and spine function and mobility. You need endurance in the muscles that stabilize the spine. And you need reflexive strength in the muscles that stabilize the spine. So let's go over these physical capacities in a little more detail. Hips and spine mobility and function are interrelated, they work together. Hip alignment is so important because if your hips are misaligned, your spine is gonna be misaligned. That's because your spine sits on your pelvis. 
When it comes to the spine, you want adequate mobility. You want to be able to extend, flex, and rotate. But in the case of the lumbar spine, the lumbar spine doesn't have as much rotational capacity as the T-spine does. And you're really not flexing your lumbar spine. It's more like you're moving from extension to a more flat position in your lumbar spine, but you're not really moving into flexion. But in your T-spine, you want to be able to flex, extend, and rotate. The point is that you want to have mobility. You want to be able to flex and extend and rotate within the framework of a healthy spine. And you certainly don't want to require a lot of muscular effort to get into a neutral spine. That is, if you can even get into a neutral spine, because some people are actually stuck in too much flexion or extension, and they just can't get out of that position. Improving the endurance of the muscles that stabilize the spine is so important. Because if those muscles fatigue quickly, it's going to be really tough to maintain good posture every day. And it's certainly going to be hard to maintain good posture during a sporting event when the muscles can fatigue so much more quickly. Even if you're riding a cart during a round, it's important that the muscles that stabilize the spine have endurance. Because sitting in poor postures actually can fatigue the muscles that stabilize the spine. And we know that sitting can cause disc damage, it can be a root cause of pain, and sitting can also be a trigger of pain. So it's really important, even if you're riding a cart during a round, that the muscles that stabilize the spine can keep you in a good posture, even when you're sitting. And if you ride in the cart, if you sit between shots, well, your spine needs time to adjust from sitting to a ballistic movement like the golf swing. And if the muscles that stabilize the spine don't have endurance and aren't fit, well, that places your spine at even a heightened risk of injury going from sitting to a ballistic movement like the golf swing. Isometric strength is so important to building endurance. Isometric techniques are the key to building endurance in the stabilizing muscles of the torso. Now, endurance and strength in those muscles is so important, especially if you have disc damage, if you have that leaky tire effect, if those discs aren't limiting movement like they should be because those walls are very sloppy and, and loose because of the damage, you need those muscles around the spine to take up the slack of that movement and tighten those walls through muscular effort so that you can limit the risk of injury to your spine. Improving the reflexive strength of the stabilizer muscles is another key to being able to maintain good posture during the day. Now, you need to tune up your reflexive strength because you don't want to be consciously thinking about keeping a neutral spine. And that's what reflexive strength is going to help you do. Reflexive strength is your neuromuscular system's capacity to anticipate and respond to movement. So when your reflexive strength is tuned up, your neurological system has the movement solutions already there to help you keep a good posture and a neutral spine during the movements and activities in the submaximal loadings that you encounter all day long. It's even more important in the golf swing. Because when your reflexive strength is tuned up, your neurological system has the movement solutions that provide just enough torso stiffness in the golf swing to protect your spine, yet allow you to create a fluid, effortless swing and create that power. So reflexive strength is really important to be able to maintain a neutral spine and good posture unconsciously every day and protect your spine during the golf swing while allowing you to create power in that fluid, effortless swing. And lastly, but probably the most important thing is you have to remove the pain triggers to begin to address the pain. And for many golfers, one of the pain triggers is the golf swing. So unfortunately, if you want to get better, you want to get back to health, you have to put the clubs down for a while and begin to address the issues that are causing the pain. And to do that, we need to address hip mobility and function, T-spine mobility and function. We need to improve the endurance of the stabilizing muscles of the spine. We need to improve the reflexive strength of the muscles that stabilize the spine. We need to be able to maintain good posture every day. And by working on those things, you're going to be able to do that. You're going to be able to build a rehab program that takes you out of pain and puts you into movements that are 
effective at building those capacities, those physical capacities, and eventually building a pain-free swing. Now, as I said, you're probably going to need to adjust your swing slightly to accommodate these new movement patterns. But if you put that all together, you can have a pain-free swing and play the best golf of your life for the rest of your life. At Golf Training Hacks, we not only want you to play better golf, but we want you to move better and feel better every day so you can play the best golf of your life for the rest of your life.